Hi, welcome to Grow New Plants. So today I'm going to propagate by division, I guess is what you'd call it, a hosta plant. So I've never done hostas before, but I know they, that you can propagate them by division, and I've done some other stuff by division, and it's pretty easy to do, really. So I picked this plant up, at, I got it at Home Depot. Uh, I don't even know what variety it is, it just says it's a hosta hybrid, so I'm not even sure what variety it is, but I just wanted to experiment with it more than anything. So I found one that looked like it had several different single plantlets growing up it would be easily divided so uh, we're going to take it and we're going to wash the roots out we're going to pull it out of the container and then we're going to wash the roots out and then we'll get started dividing it up okay so i've just got a bucket of water here and i'm going to take my plant and just kind of turn it upside down and then i'm going to do this i'm going to kind of bust it up a little bit because i don't want to put all that in the water it's got a lot of roots on it it's got a really good root system See all the roots on there? So I'm gonna bust as much of this soil loose as I can over here, and then I'll take it and I'll drop it in the water. Let's go ahead and dip it in there. Well, I'm just kind of sloshing it around in here just to kind of knock all that soil off. And the main reason for knocking the soil off is just so I can see the roots, so I can do my best to get as many roots as I can with each division. This, I mean, sometimes I've done this before with other plants and they end up with a couple that don't have very many roots. Sometimes they survive, sometimes they don't. So let's wash most of that off. I'm just kind of shaking it around in here. Each time I do it, I'm getting more and more of the soil off. I think I got most of it. I'm going to take it over to the garden hose and just wash it out a little bit more just so I can get as much of the soil as possible off just so I can see where my roots and stuff are. And we'll be right back after I get that washed off good. Okay, so I got these washed off pretty good now. So we can look in here. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five. It looks to me like there's five good plants in here. So what we have to do is we have to try and cut these out. I just got a pocket knife here, just any kind of sharp knife will do. So what we want to try and do is we want to cut these things out and still keep as much root system on each one as we can. And that's the tricky part. So I think if I go, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out, I'm just going to slice through the, the bottoms. You know what, I'm going to get a different knife. This knife is not good enough. Let me go grab another knife. Okay, so this is a fillet knife for my kitchen, but it is absolutely the sharpest knife that I own, so it's a great knife. So I just want to come in here and just make a slight cut between those two. I'm not going to go too deep down yet. I just want to make cuts in between each one first. Not too deep, but just to, basically just trying to separate them at the base of each plant first, and then we'll work at getting the roots out. It's always hard to do this on. That one in the middle is going to be the hardest one to get anything out of. Okay, so let's pick one that, this is probably going to be their easiest one to separate because it's got a little space here and a little space here. So let's go ahead and try that one. We're just gonna go a little deeper this time. Do the same thing on the other side. And then just kinda gently pull apart what we got with it. So that one Lost a few roots, but we got three good solid big roots and then some smaller roots coming off of it. So that one should be great. Okay, so that separates this one here out a little bit. Space here and space here. So we'll do the same thing with it. We'll just go ahead and take that one all the way through. Oh, we're doing good so far. That one has a ton of roots attached to it still. 
that's got a massive amount of roots. Some of those are dead, cut off now, but so that's a really nice one there too. So let's set that one to the side. Let's see. And these are going to be a little bit trickier here. Let's go ahead and just cut through that one. I don't know if that's enough to... Now we're going to separate it on the other side too. Some of these are pretty tight. I don't know. That broke that one loose. That's still got a lot of roots. That should be good. And we only got two left, so... Now this one, you can see it kind of offshoots. I don't know how well you can see that. This is the main one. This one is kind of offshooted from it. So hopefully we can come down the middle here and get a shared amount of those roots on both of these. So that one, that root's cut, but that's good. So that should do great. And this one probably has the fewest amount of roots. It's only got two big roots, but it's got some little ones that are trying to come out up here. So it should do okay too. And it's got some of these feeder roots too. So I think we actually did pretty good. So we got one, two, three, four, five with pretty decent sets of roots. So I, I feel pretty confident all these will survive. So uh, I'm gonna get my pot set up and then we'll start planting them into pots, each individual pot. Okay, so I've got my soil here and I debated back and forth on whether to go with my seed start soil, which is 50-50 peat moss and perlite. This particular mix is 75% fine ground uh, bark mulch. It's triple ground. I get it from a, a local soil supply place here and it's triple ground uh, hardwood pine bark from locally from where I'm at here in Texas. And then 25% peat moss. And then it, I end up making a two gallon, two five gallon or 10 gallon basically mix of this stuff. And it's fixing to start raining on me too. Hopefully I can get this done before we get wet. Uh, but it's 25% peat moss, 75% bark mulch, and then in that 10 gallon mix that I mix up, I've got 12 ounces of Osmocote fertilizer, which you can see that right there. So I think it's gonna be fine for these. These should take off. And my plan for these is I'm potting them up into one gallon pots, and I'm probably gonna just let them grow this year, and I'll take them and redivide them again next year. So I may end up with 30 or 40 of these things. So, so anyway. So since these roots are pretty long, I don't want to disturb these long roots. So what I'm going to do is, I can do this as well as I can on the camera. So basically I'm going to hold them about where I want them, where they're going to end up their finished position. And then I'm just going to start pouring soil in around them. And that lets those roots kind of be in as natural as possible of a position where they would be, instead of just cramming the roots down in there where they're all curled up. So they'll basically kind of fill out the pot. And once I get close, and I can kind of start packing them in there a little bit. You just want to pack them in there good enough to where they're stable. And once they start growing roots and the sun gets on them, they'll, they'll start wanting to grow upright again. Even if they're a little crooked, the sun will fix that for them. So pack it in there pretty good just to hold it in place good. So there's one of them. I'll do one more of them on camera and then I'll do the other ones. I'll fast forward through those. So we can go back with another pot here. And these are my root maker one gallon pots. These are older root makers that are shorter, which for this is fine. They make these, the newer ones that you buy now are a little bit longer, maybe two inches deeper. And it, these just take up less soil. And if it's not like a, a big tree or something, uh, there's plenty of soil for a plant like this. So that's a really big root system on that one right there. So we'll do the same thing. We'll hold it in place. Pour some soil in around it. Scoot it around where it's on all four sides, or all four sides, all the way around it. I guess the circle doesn't have sides, does it? That's pretty stable there, and we'll just start adding a little bit more soil by hand. And I'm gonna take these, I'm just gonna set them in the backyard, and I'm gonna put them up against the fence, because these things like a little bit of shade. They don't, they'll take some sun. I've had this plant out in the sun for two weeks. I bought it about two weeks ago, and it's doing just fine. But overall, these are a shade-loving plant. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant them up against my fence or set them up against my fence in the backyard where they'll get from probably about, I don't know, 1 o'clock, maybe 2 o'clock on, they'll start getting shade. They'll still get plenty of light there, but they won't get full sun all day long. So that's two of them. So I'll fast forward through the rest of them. Okay, so I've got them all planted up now, and I'm just going to water them in a little. I think I just got my camera wet. So I'm just going to wash the leaves off a little bit. Not really necessary, but just to make them look pretty. And I just got this little mister head. I like this mister head. It takes a little bit longer to water something in, but they're, uh, it doesn't disturb the soil quite so much, especially when they're new planting. So I really like it for my seeds and stuff, too, so it doesn't wash my seeds out. So... Like I said, I'm going to take these things and I'm going to set them in the semi-shade where they're going to get sun probably, probably pretty much morning sun, maybe a little bit of early afternoon sun. And then uh, after that, they'll get mostly shade, but they'll still get plenty of, of other indirect light. So it'll, it'll simulate them being underneath a tree, under a shade tree or something like that. And I'll water these things in now. I'm supposed to get some rain this afternoon. If I don't end up getting any rain, then I will, uh, I will come back and water them again, probably later this afternoon, one more time. And then I'll just water them with the sprinkler heads like I water all my other stuff after that. So this one's kind of heavy to this side because of the way it was growing. It was probably on this side of the plant, but it'll start filling out now that it's open. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. What I will do is I will do a follow-up on these later in the summer. By then, hopefully, I'll start seeing other divisions on them. So that way, we'll kind of have an idea whether they're going to divide up enough in this season that I can take them and split them up again next year. You know, I did this, uh, I did one, and I'm going to do it again. I did some with some liriope and turned it into quite a few plants. But with that liriope, I was getting anywhere from six to eight separate uh, divisions off of every plant. So I turned just a couple, I think I started with maybe four or five pots of, of a big blue variety and then turned that into 40 or 50 or so plants before I finally sold them off. And I'm probably going to do that again too. That was really fun. I like doing that. So anyway, so here we go. So uh, check back with me. I will do a uh, follow-up video at the end of the summer. This is April, mid-April right now. So I'll do a follow-up video at the end of the summer and we'll uh, see if they're dividing back up again. I'm sure they're gonna survive. I feel confident they're gonna survive, but we'll take a look at them. And I may post some pictures on my Facebook every once in a while to show you what they're looking like too. If you wanna subscribe to my Facebook page, the link's in the description. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Please like, please subscribe, and please share my videos. Thank you.